Welcome to How to Play Ambient Guitar 19. On today's episode, I'd like to discuss the, the use of acoustic guitar in ambient guitar music. If you're like me, you might kind of automatically reach for that old electric guitar, plug in a bunch of pedals, and have at it. And that's awesome. But I find it really useful to return from time to time, as a matter of fact, again and again, to acoustic guitar, which for me is one of the roots of my guitar playing. And I find it really useful to generate ideas and even to generate performances of ambient style music on the acoustic guitar. So what I'd like to do today is just provide a few ideas for how to leverage your acoustic guitar in ambient guitar music. So idea number one, Take advantage of either altered tunings or dual capos like I have here. And by the way, you can check out altered tuning and capo episodes of How to Play Ambient Guitar. I'll put the description somewhere for you below. Uh, but consider the use of that altered tuning or dual capos to achieve a drone. If you're like me, uh, you may include a lot of drone tones in your electric ambient guitar music. You can do the same thing on acoustic guitar uh, easily with an altered tuning such as Dadgad or some of the other tunings that really favor a low drone. So you can get some really nice um, melodies and chordal structures using the drone. Okay, idea number two. Don't do a lot of strumming. Now, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying strumming is bad, but if we think about ambient music, I think one, and if you think back kind of in the history, back to like Brian Eno and Robert Fripp, some of the early guys, and then how it's progressed through into post-rock, concepts and then more modern and modern types of ambient music you know within the last 10 years or so there can be a lot of space in the music and if you're strumming you're going to reduce the space between the notes you're also going to fill the space with a lot of rhythms and, you know, while that sounds great for folk, for rock, for bluegrass, Celtic, etc., for ambient music, I find it more useful to leave space between the notes. So you may want to use the hybrid picking technique that I've outlined before, or even perhaps a thumb pick, if you know how to use a thumb pick, along with, um, you know, regular finger picking. But leave some space between your notes. Idea number three, consider where you are picking in relationship to the bridge and the fingerboard. Okay, so it, I find this true on electric guitar, but in even more so on acoustic guitar, you can really kind of change the tone of your string by where you pick in relationship to the bridge. So, you know, you might find a lot of players picking close to the bridge. And it, it provides a, a more sharp sound, more trebly sound. Um, I find that's not bad, and I'm not saying you shouldn't use it in ambient guitar music, but I do find playing closer to the sound hole or even over the sound hole provides a warmer, rounder tone, which I think can fit in well with ambient style music.
Idea number four. Think about the type of pick you're using. I've got a couple different picks here. You probably can't see them too well in this shot. Let me hold them maybe down here. So I've got a 1.4 millimeter. It's actually a bluegrass pick that I really like. I've got a kind of a one point, I think about a 1.8 millimeter pick. That's pretty cool. And then I've got a 1.5 millimeter old, old, old tortoise shell pick that I've been using now for many, many, many years. It was actually made out of an antique uh, comb or brush set that was, you know, 100 years old, made out of actual tortoise shell. So you can't get these, to, you can't get these anymore, but it's pretty cool. One of the things you might have heard, though, is that in terms of millimeters, it's more than, the, all of these picks are more than one millimeter thick. And as a matter of fact, um, I do have another pick that I use that's actually two millimeters thick. These are pretty, pretty hefty picks. They don't really bend when you use them. Um, I know a lot of guys and gals use very thin picks to, uh, especially with strumming, because they like that kind of floppy, kind of feel and kind of, you know, having the strip, the pick, sorry, flap across the strings. But one of the things that, that happens when you use thinner picks is you get more pick noise against the string. And if you're playing slowly and quietly, And you've got one of those very thin picks, you're going to get pick noise, like really loud pick noise that's going to be distracting. So consider using a thicker guitar pick that will actually be quieter on the strings. If you're not used to these thicker guitar picks, it'll take a little while to adjust to the thickness. But once you do adjust, you're going to find that not only do you have less noise on the string, You'll also find when you're playing electric guitar and maybe you're playing a lead, uh, you know, lead line or something like that, the the thicker pick allows you to actually play faster, which I know is not an, not an issue for ambient music, but if you are playing a faster style of music, it does allow you to play faster, and it allows you to play faster with less string noise, and the pick, once again, once you get used to it, really kind of glides across the strings a lot easier. So consider using a thicker guitar pick. Next idea. Consider using hammer-ons and pull-offs in your ambient music. Okay, and you know, maybe normally you're thinking of hammer-ons and pull-offs with um, electric guitar leads or maybe uh, faster bluegrass picking. <laughs> kind of like that, right? So you, you, we've all heard that. We've all heard hammer-ons and pull-offs with electric leads, but in slow ambient guitar music, a hammer-on or a pull-off can be very expressive. You can do a lot with hammer-ons and pull-offs, so consider weaving them into your melody or chordal structure with your acoustic ambient guitar piece. Final idea for today's episode. Use the same types of chord structure and voicing techniques that we've talked about in some of the other episodes in how to play ambient guitar. So the third and fifth are great, right? Thank you. 
and the, oh, those ninths. And space between the bass and treble tones. Lots of things you can do with chord inversions, chord voicings, and chord spacing. Well, there you have it. Some quick ideas for how to leverage acoustic guitar in your ambient guitar playing. Don't be afraid to go back to basics. Grab that old hollow piece of wood and have at it. Focus on your chord voicings, chord structure, picking, melody, and space in between the tones. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I've got ambient guitar related content coming every week. And if you are interested, you can check out Chords of Orion Music somewhere up in here. And as always, I'll see all of you on the next video.